Left to the right, top to the floor. When I say black history, say it's yours. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. And we say it loud and proud again. There's no America without the African. Fighting to get it equal. Black history, the story of the people. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. It's yours. Only 28 days in the month of February. It's just a kickoff. We don't stop till every textbook and every... Did we lose Manny? Yeah, it looks like it. Mm-mm. <clears throat> you doing all right, Trish? Blessed and highly favored up here in Virginia visiting the grandbaby, so you know I'm in my happy place. Oh, yeah. What, what about you? Growing, growing. Oh, yeah, just trying to stay out of the way. Under the weather. We were close. We were close to production and something happened. Okay, welcome, 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 welcome to the show. We got a big show today. We're going to keep it pushing. Uh, we will eventually get the production down. We will. Welcome. Black History Month. Welcome to the show. Steph, how are you? Uh, man, just chilling, brother. Allergies got a brother on lock. Oh, yeah. Did, did it get warm down there? Oh, yeah. Can it's, see? It's budding. it's budding out there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's warm out here. It's about 75 out here. It's about 75 out here. We're doing well. Trish, Miss Goss, Miss Clark's Golf Life, what's up? What's up with you fellas up here in Virginia, in my happy place, visiting the grandbaby and daughter and family. So y'all know I'm good. Nice, nice, nice. Always good to uh, see family and visit the Grizan. Grizan. Okay, let's get the show cracking. Um... Our first guest has great and exciting information for us. You want to talk about it, Trish, before we bring him on? All right. So we have the absolute pleasure of bringing Mr. Charlie Sifford Jr. on. Um, They've been working on some really great big things. Um, We have the Charlie Sifford Foundation Scholarship coming. So we're about to make an announcement on that. Um, (laughs) um, Application opens on February 15th. And we just want to bring Charlie on. And the guest, so he can talk about what we're looking for. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's bring on our guy, family. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm fine. How you doing? Oh, we can't complain. We can't complain. So many great things are happening. Uh, I love it. So many great things are happening. I love that you can come on for a brief moment uh, to talk about it. Uh, what's going on with you? Well, we've been um, along with my daughter, Julia, who's happened to be at the um, basketball game tonight, watching um, Chris's favorite team, the Ke- Cleveland Cavaliers. Y'all can't play <laughs> dead in the horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, but what we got going on, um, we got a scholarship fund. Um, where we're going to award some um, scholarships to kids that are going to um, HBCU schools, um, trying to help them get get the education. Um, if they want to, you know, play golf or get into the hotel business, sell business, selling business or golf equipment, whatever, you know, they need help with the education. Um, we're going to be there to, to give them a hand. Um, like, like Trish said, the um, the portal opens up um, a week from today, the fifteenth. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, with, you know, it's going to entail um, answering some um, some general questions, 
naturally a, a good grade point average. And um and this right and uh, it's going to contain also an essay that they have to write. And there's going to be I guess maybe about six, seven people on the board that's going to read uh, uh, everything that's been submitted and make a decision who's going to get the scholarships. We're looking to give out approximately six scholarships for our first time around this year. Yeah. And um, hopefully that will, you know, it's, you know, it's not a lot of money, but it definitely is going to help them get started on education. Um, it's for high school seniors that are going to HBCUs. Mm -hmm. Also, um, kids that are already in the HBCU program that's, you know, you know, going, you know, for a sophomore year, we'd be able to help them as well. Mm -hmm. Things go well as we expect it to. We you know we plan on doing this for a long time to come. Oh, that's beautiful. That's Very beautiful. excited. Very excited. Now, is so, it, you know, is it's, it, it's something that my, you know, I'm sure my dad would appreciate. You know, he he's always been, you know, for kids and young people to, to get involved in the game, mm -hmm. you know, and um, get, getting educated is just a plus, you know, to help them with their golf game, education, and, where, you know, just build character and, and get a chance to meet people from different walks of life, you know, to help them and their and whatever decision they decide to make as far as their education and future careers. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's like golf management programs and everything else like that, right, Charlie? You're right. Golf management. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to be on, on the golf team, but you, you can you know be majoring in um you know, hotel talent. management, finance, yeah. anything working working towards the business side of golf as well. Oh, that's Love beautiful. It. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Especially uh, in a legend's name like that, you know, and it's uh, guided towards the HBCU family and how well they can teach and train our young men and women and add golf to that. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, and it opens up. A week from today, the portal? A week from today, uh, February the 15th. All right, all right, audience. All right, audience. And we'll provide a link. And, of course, we'll put it all on our social media. And, uh, you know, it's nothing we can just say about that, but how fantastic and what a great opportunity that is. Uh, Sif Dog, what you got to say before we let your hey, peoples go? Cuzzo, man, what's good with you? Good talking to you the other night. Uh, and just wanted to highlight, on the centennial year, it was, I mean, you were traveling like the Beatles, man. I mean, you were yeah. in uh, every town, every city, every yeah. state, and uh, and rightfully so. And uh, long overdue, uh, my question uh, to you uh, in the Charter Civil Foundation and, uh, and for those who uh, are advocating for uh, African-American Black Golf uh, HBCU, how do we keep this momentum going? Uh, it was a great centennial year. Uh, you know, every news outlet was Charlie Sifford. I think the, the PGA did a tremendous job in uh, highlighting him, uh, like I said, long overdue. But how do we hold them accountable and keep the momentum and brand this for eternity? Well, um, one of my trips last year, I I was invited down to the PGA headquarters and I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with, with, with uh, the commissioner and, um, you know, all the, everything he said, you know, is a positive. He's, he realizes that, um, the PGA is, has a long way to go to, um, improve their image. And, um, he's working on that. Um, i saw a lot, so a lot of African Americans working at the PGA, young American, young African Americans, and they mid twenties working at the headquarters in, in some meaningful, you know, positions, decision making positions, and um, you know, I, I think it's 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 a plus going on. We're going they as of right now, we have um, an invitation to come down to Dallas. 
Um, the golf course in Dallas is a public golf course called Cedar Crest, and they will be erecting a statue of my father down there. Uh, that's got the date. It's supposed to be May the 8th. And so I'm looking, really looking forward to that. And then also yeah. late in June, uh, we've been invited back to um, Connecticut to the, the Hartford Open, which is called the Travelers now, which was Dad's first victory. Um, mm -hmm. They're one of our largest contributors to the foundation. And wow. hopefully we'll be able to raise some more money for the foundation in June. Wow, that's dope. Come on, how, 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 atonement. <laughs> atonement is a beautiful, beautiful thing, especially Reparation. when it's directed to family that's going to take care and make sure everything is right, you know? And um, I mean, what else can you say? Big things are happening. I'm glad you asked that question, Sif, because, you know, one-offs are great and it can help people, but yearly, annually, that's going to make big change if we can keep everything that's already started going annually for years to come. And Julia and even her kids right. and can keep it going. That's how we get generational change. It well, doesn't we have always to do, have to be We have to do our part, our well. part, though. We have to do our we part. We have to. Yeah, we got to do our to, part. We just can't, uh, just because the PGA stepped up and uh, it's mm -hmm. like a dangling part of simple. If we don't, oh. if we don't, and we know, and the thing, the, the, the conversations and the dialogue that I get into with other people is, uh, well, Big Charlie, Big Daddy wasn't the, the only one. No, he wasn't. I, we never said that. I said, we said that he was the one who finished the race. And so we're not comparing uh, who had it the toughest, who had it the hardest. We, we're just saying this guy was the one. Uh, that finished the race. And I think if people were to get on board instead of standing off onto the sides and, and, and trying to compare, I think that we could actually do some great, the greater good for all of us. Absolutely. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. Perfectly said. Perfectly said. All right, CJ. Uh, parting last words. And it's so fitting that you came on today. What just a blessing. I think this show... We've, we have a blessing today because everything is tying into what we totally believe in, what we totally support, and what we totally been praying about is about opportunities, righting the wrongs of history with an emphasis on HBCU golf. And we couldn't ask for a better show and better guest that's coming up. Last words, uh, Charles. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, you know, to pass on the word um what's happening um my daughter julia she's the main focus behind the, the foundation um she's going to be running it um i'm just going to be in the background and hopefully you know she won't have to come to me too often you know <laughs> let her let her run the show you know if, if need be i definitely be there to support her and give in any way i can but it's her baby and um, she's and I'm we all the whole family is um, working together to make this last, you know, for however long we can, you know, it'll run. Um, we hope that it grows more and more every year, you know, with travelers being the main and we sponsor. And we're right now we're working on several other possibilities to, to help us, you know, keep this going you know, and grow, going and growing. And um, we want to try to help as many kids as we possibly can. Beautiful. Shout out to Julia, I know she's busy. Uh, but she'll be back on, that's family too. We love her and, I'm, I, and Pop, it, it's so special when you can pass it down to your daughter, the new generation with all the energy and all the new ideas, because that way, you know, it's in great hands starting off. And, you know, it's good to have that guiding light behind her, which is you, uh, Charlie Jr. And, you know, your work has been phenomenal. The work has been phenomenal and it's just starting. And um, shouts out. Um, yeah, party it. words, uh, anybody. Before we get on. Yeah. Just to recap. Um, so for the Charlie Sifford Jr. Foundation Scholarship, well, the Charlie Sifford Foundation Scholarship. So it is going, coming out on February 15th. It'll um, the applications will be available through April, 
and the decision will be made in June. So we're very, very excited about that. Um, again, it's for incoming um, college students to HBCUs, as well as students that are already enrolled in HBCUs. So we're super excited about this. Charlie, thank you so much for coming on. Um, tell Julia we missed her, but we'll definitely, you know, bring her back on so we can um, talk about, you know, the traction and everything. And like you said, we want to keep the momentum. So this is not just the first, but it's the first of many. So thank you for coming on. Okay, it's my pleasure. Always nice seeing you guys. Hey, Cubs. Beautiful. One more thing, man. Just uh, haven't been on committees before. Uh, and I know you said something about um, the requirements, uh, essay great GPA, um, you know, you have some people that uh, their best work, it may be C, C work. So we definitely don't want to exclude uh, who's doing their best work. You know what I mean? I've yeah. gotten, yeah, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, you, yeah. you're going to have your top tier kids, but then you're going to have somebody who's busting their ass every day and they just can't produce anything but a C. And uh, so we don't need to forget about those guys as well. Yeah, I know that's been been there and done that. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and that's the beauty of the, and again, the beauty of directing that towards HBCUs because they're going to get back home and they're going to take care of them. And that's going to be right. an A because they're right. going to take the yeah, extra absolutely. time and the extra expertise that maybe other institutions won't and make that C and A because they yeah. got caring, they got love, and they know as long as you try your best, you're going to be fantastic, fantastic. You know, All right? Okay, you know, like I said, it's going to be more than just, you know, it's going to be a combination of things to make the decision who gets it. It's right. not going to strictly be grade point or golfing ability or, you know, who writes the best essay. It's a combination of everything combined into that that's going right. to end up, you know, determining who's going to be the winner of the scholarships. Dope. Love it, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Keep that cold Sorry. ass weather up there. <laughs> well, I'm going I'm to bring, I'm, a, I'm flying down to see Trish next month. So I'm on my way over Charlotte. I'm going to drop. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, fella. Sorry. Sorry, uh, audience. Just a little technical difficulties, but Charlie Sifford, we're going to say bye, and uh, we'll be right back. We will be right back. We'll have you on any time. Thanks again for coming. A beautiful, beautiful uh, scholarship opportunity, and we'll have Julia on, too, as the uh, announcement, and we get closer to closing. And what's that? Uh, that was in June, right? Um, no, so it's closing. Go ahead. It's, yeah, it's going to be closing um, in May, and the, the announcement is going to be in June. Uh, we're gonna try to Beautiful. get you know we're gonna make the announcement prior to the um to the um first you know first day of the um travelers golf tournament. Oh, okay. They, cool. they the they the they the, they the they the largest contributor to the foundation as, as of now, and uh, we want to make the announcement at their golf tournament this year. Okay. Do, do you guys have an, a link already set up too, so uh, anyone can just give too? And put yeah. more into it's the pot. Set up, you know, um, they working on it. I just got word today that you know they finalizing everything and it's ready to go on the fifteenth. Beautiful, beautiful. One more shout out. So Can't wait to we'll see definitely you in March. have you back. See you in March, brother. See you in March again. Thanks for coming on. All right, enjoy it. All Take right. care. Take care. You. Go. All right, we're live. And sometimes production has its, not difficulties, but creativities. <laughs> no, but um, if no one thought this was live and we pre-recorded, it's not. It's live. We keep it pushing. We keep it pushing. What a great segue into our guest today. We're, gonna, we're not going to keep them. Um, like I said before, when we came on last uh, last week, you know, we... We're spotlighting HBCU golf. When people told us behind the scenes, why would you do that? No one wants to hear about HBCU golf. Talk about the pros and talk about, well, they have shows for that. 
Our show is not for that. Our show is not to keep talking about the pros. To go, to, go to ESPN, go to the PGA website. We're highlighting our people. We're highlighting APGA. We're, we're highlighting HBCU. We're highlighting juniors. We're highlighting entrepreneurs in the space. That's what our platform is for, you know. And they was like, no, nah, no, nah, go, go. You'll get more hits. You'll get more likes, more social media stuff. Everybody likes the pros. Like, then who's going to spotlight? What's really important, at least for us, you know, we, we want our platform to be what's important for us. We are on the show. I like the PGA. I like the LPGA. But, you know, my heart is in the HBCU golf programs. And remember a couple of years ago, a lot of them was just cranking back up after COVID, after a lot of schools just didn't have the budgetary uh, means to keep the programs alive. And so I'm just thankful that we started and we're keep on pushing and everything's coming full circle. Just think mm -hmm. like, just think that the centennial was coming on. We were very happy about the uh, Charlie Siffer centennial celebration and all the things. And look what spawned from that. We're going to have scholarships directed at golf and golf entrepreneurs directed into the HBCU space. That's a full circle of what, can happen and what's going to happen. What say you before we bring on our beautiful guest? Look, like you said, it's a great segue into it. We have the scholarships going on for the HBCU. We have two wonderful guests about to come on. And so we can kind of talk to them and see, you know, how does this benefit, you know, HBCU golf? So um, like you said, great segue into the two guests that we have coming on and looking forward to the continued conversation of what we love and support. Give an air horn for that. I have a, I have a, uh, uh, <laughs> I have a, a speed button on my mouse, and if I hit this button again, guess what happens? We, we, I blank out. The whole screen <laughs> blanks out. I gotta <laughs> stop. I better change my. That's what's been happening. Ow. I gotta it. speed some crazy button on my mouse that if I hit it, the whole thing goes. So let's bring in our people. Let's not hit that button, and let's keep it. Quick. Huh, right here. Let's get our beautiful guests on top. Maybe not, or maybe so. We gonna get it together. That's one. That's two. There we go. Oh. There we go. There we go. The most important people gotta be have the big have the big the big play the chicken, and that's on top. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. Welcome, welcome. I know you was in the lobby. You could hear uh, Charlie Sifford Jr.'s great announcement. And what a great segue into both of you guys' beautiful accomplishments and your everlasting energy towards something we all love. People talk about it, y'all, but y'all doing it every single day. Every single day. Uh, introduce yourself to the audience and uh, let's get this started. Ladies first. Hi, my name is Tiana Jones. I'm the head man and women's golf coach at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore Division One program. Uh oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. One of my favorite people. Um, <laughs> yes, and my name is uh, Leonard Smoot, head golf coach at Miles College, and also the new president of the BCGCA, which is the Black College Golf Coaches Association. There we go. We're giving it all up. Everybody gets air home. What's just a, 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 a beautiful group of people that can speak to this from your expertise and not rumors and not hearsay. That's why we had uh, Charles Jr. on. And that's what our audience expects, hearing from the people on the ground doing the hard work day in and day out. Um, let's see. Tiana, is how long have you been in the position? Give us a, 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 a quick background of you taking over the D1 mm -hmm. program. This is beautiful news. And then we're going to get to the man of the hour, too. I started in November of last year. Uh, so I've been in a role for a couple of months um, and just coming in and, and cleaning up a lot of things as well as organizing some things and getting ready for the upcoming season uh, for the spring and the fall. And so I've learned a lot. Um, and I've come from a background of being a student athlete. I competed at two 
uh, universities that were HBCUs. And so I'm, I have a different lens uh, when it comes to this coaching thing, as well as uh, what my student athletes are going through. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're going to dive deeper into that. Coach Smooth, tell us what's going on, brother. Well, you know, obviously, I'm like again. I'm gonna I'm pump her up because I'm proud of what she's doing. <laughs> what she needs to. Yes, I'm gonna pump her up. Give her, give her all the love she deserves as a as a person coming into um to the HBCU. She's a talented golfer herself. Um, so I wanted to just commend her on uh, her and I talk quite a bit uh, in recent months. So I've gotten to learn to know about her. So I'm excited about the things that she's gonna bring to the table. Kind of, you know, as we get older, we got to hand it off, right? So, um, man, and she's a perfect candidate to hand hand off everything too. So, um, yeah, obviously, you all know we, like Kiana said, we're um, here at Miles College. I'm the head golf coach. Um, we're about to get our season started off playing now at the state uh, tournament in February. Uh, yeah, we're D two, but we play like D one. So we we, right. we kick on all comers. It don't matter. Um, so. <laughs> Um, we're getting yeah, so, for that. yeah, we're getting our season started, but, um, you know, also as a new president um, of the BCGCA, we got some great things going on. We just came back from our uh, convention uh, in December. And, uh, I think we, we had the most uh, coaches at that convention, uh, which was the GCAA, Golf Coaches Association's convention ever in the history of our, our programs, which all the coaches had a great opportunity to, to meet and, 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 and fellowship and communicate and kind of see where we need to go uh, with this thing called HBC Golf for not only just the current programs, but programs that we hope that will bring their pro, uh, colleges, bring their programs back uh, to the fold. So uh, I think we have a great group of um, ex our executive board that we have, which I am the uh, president, you got Sam Per year who's the director of golf at Howard University. Uh, Jamila Johnson, who's at UMES. Uh, Ken Kendra Green, which you've all had on on, on your podcast before, at uh, as I uh, treasure. Um, Andy Walker, who's at VCU um, as a board member. You have uh, Kevin Jennings at Central Michigan, who's formerly uh, was a standout coach at. Um, uh, Prairie View, and we have Lee Cobo at uh, Virginia Union. So we have a, a, an array of folks on our on our board um, that I think will help carry this uh, uh, organization to the next level. Um, we are our immediate past president Craig Bond did an amazing job. Um, so we're just going to continue to build build on that uh, on that platform and, and being that. Um, being an organization for our student athletes, first and foremost, creating more opportunity, creating uh, a better a way, raising money to support those programs that need, being, need to be supported. Because at the end of the day, this is not about us as coaches. It's really all about our student athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just want to get that word out uh, into our community uh, that we need them to support this organization. Um, wholeheartedly to so we can support our kids so that's what's going on in our world um and, and tiana she's uh her and i work closely uh, with the bylaws and things so her and i've been brainstorming a lot so i'm excited um and she's full of energy so like i can say i'm gonna pump her up because i think that's the kind of person she is so that's what's going on in our world. We, we, we we love to hear that and we love the the youth and the diversity with just within you guys' ranks. That is just a, a great way to show that you guys are going to be around and do big things for a very, very long, long time. Between Charlie uh, Jr. handing it off to Julia, young African-American woman that's going to bring new and invigorating ideas. Uh, Tiana's in here, uh, 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 in the mix in the board already coaching the d1 school but she's so young and energetic she got 
50 years to make to, to do <laughs> big, big things. Yeah. And she's and, and and I love that because you can already know she understands the problems and she's not with that BS. She's gonna make it happen and she's gonna make it streamlined and she's gonna be part of the solution. Not to even say there was any problem. Sometimes we just need more solutions. Um all right. Sif and uh, Miss Clark's Golf Life, I'm going to let you dive in because I'll talk all night. Yeah. Hey, uh, for you guys, um, Coach Smoot, you named some some strong names on that board, man. Very strong names, <laughs> but also with some strong personalities. <laughs> and so, uh, no yeah. So, uh, and I call them when you guys take a, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, forget, forget the word that I'm looking for, but the uh, meeting that you guys had, I call them think tanks. And so mm. you're able to get away, uh, have a think tank with with strong names, strong personalities, uh, uh, some guys and young ladies who have some great solutions. But I'm sure you're going to also have in a group that large some, po- some folk who uh, that are torn, that are, you know what I mean? So what, what the, if, in terms from a, a pro stamp a pro and con what pros came out of the think tank and what cons came out of the think tank well in my opinion from the uh, the pros that came out one having 20 i think we had about we had about what 20 20 coaches from all our hbcus present first and foremost and we all are going to have our differences i mean we all got our we all have our opinions, but how do you go about in that think tank, right? How do you take those, everybody's ideas and come up with a common thread or where everybody's bought into the organization and what we all are striving to achieve? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we got strong personalities on the board, but every one of those personalities on the board are well accomplished individuals that they know the game, they've been in the game, they've been around the game. And so, you know, I as a president, I have to sit back and listen to the, that expertise. Right. No, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You just need to have the smartest people around you to help you be accomplish the goals that you're trying to set out and do. And oh, obviously, yeah, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? saying? So with, you know, yeah, with those personalities, right? Um, you take those strengths because we all have weaknesses. You take their strength and el- help to elevate the organization. And that's what I see coming from me as a, as the president and chairperson. Of, it's not my organization. Right. It's our organization. Not only do we have an executive board, but every member at every co- at our colleges, at our HBCUs are all part of what's going to, go, what's going to take place, mm-hmm. moving this organization forward. Beautiful. Love it. Trish. Yeah. Yeah, so um, these two individuals here, Tiana and Coach Smoot, I was able to meet them at the PGA show. Um, also, the Monday before the show, we, uh, you know, I've met um, Tiana, and she's going to come out and showed out. Like I said, she's a student golfer now, <laughs> coach, That's right. slash boss, slash, you know, serial entrepreneur. Like, when I tell you this queen is doing some things, she's really doing some things. Um, so I do want to ask one question. When we talk about the BCGCA, so do we support how can we support the bcgca um and is it a support the association or is it do we support the individual schools or is it a combination of the two you want to talk you want to talk a little bit from your perspective tiana as being the younger person on the call So in my opinion, um, supporting the organization is ultimately giving back to the student athletes as a whole um, because they host several tournaments throughout the season that helps bring awareness to the HBCU programs, um, as well as the fact that giving to the programs themselves is also beneficial because we all have our own struggles and challenges um, even though we're all in the same field in the same industry and we're working with the next generation. So, I mean, you know, whatever that is for you, you can, you can give to the organization It's still going to go into the student athletes, but giving into the programs as well as something that, that needs to balance out also. 
Beautiful. And, and from my perspective as the president is that by helping us, we can help it, we can help our programs um, at the at the colleges. And, and granted, you know, the, the individual schools need that need that help, and I wholeheartedly because you know every coach the first priority is their institution, and I fully understand that. But with BCGCA, what we can do is I can. I'm gonna tell you, I got some lofty goals um, and some goals that I hope to share with the with our executive board. One, one is raising the amount and doing fundraising that allows us to be able to help take those same those dollars and pour them back into the institutions. Uh, partner with you know the PGA Tour to create uh, better um, uh, tournament uh, tournament schedules for our institutions and even possibly. Elevating them to a level where we we combine some of our HBCUs and PWIs to even play together, so that they understand we got to get we got to get our HBCUs to the next level, right? We got to get we got the, we're we're that pipeline for the APGA, right? All of that, all of those things are important. Um, so um, supporting us through fundraising, being hopefully we'll get something out of. Uh, giving to and donating individually, looking for corporation sponsorship, all those things are going to make a big impact on, on this organization. Uh, and, and I hope that this organization is the primary organization. So when we, when I'm gone, or when the next president it comes in with his vision or her vision, that we can eventually pass this off to the coach uh, Tiana Jones. We're going to pass this off to Coach Charles Penny, that's at you know over there at West Winston Salem. You know we got to we. The thing is, and I think from an organizational standpoint, and I this is how I think is that what's that succession plan that we make to make this organization sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that is without 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 donations, it's hard to do that, right? So we got to have donations donated to this organization knowing that we're the primary organization and the coaches within the organization are the ones that know the needs of, uh, of each one of their institution and those that are not even in existence that we hope to break, that I'm hoping that Hampton comes back. You know, I'm hoping that schools that had thriving programs um, like the Bethune Cookmans, like the Jackson State with Eddie Payton, all those schools and being able to support, those things are critical to our HBCUs, and I think at some from a perspective of stop looking at golf as being a cup that's half empty, and start looking at golf at your HBCUs as a cup half full. Right. Um, beautiful, beautiful. And with and with all the stuff in the news, the Coach Prime stuff, the the, the Ed Reed, the all the HBCU popularity. And I'm not going to say for good or bad. I'm going to say for good because anything that uh, uh, brings light to HBCUs and their programs is always good because the right people eventually find their way and hopefully uni can happen. And with you guys as uh, coaches uh, association and you can share some of the problems. I'm sure every problem is not the same in every institution, but the overarching <clears throat> theme if you have a negative, which I don't believe in negatives, I just believe in good news and change news, right? The good news is the good news and the and the change news is we're just going to change some stuff and then that turns into good news. You know, that, that's how I look at everything. There's good news and then there's change news and we're going to change some stuff. When and, and some of the stuff that came out on some of the like town halls and throughout the, uh, the, the HBU diaspora was some stuff was... Uh, Anodated old thinking, not enough new thinking or new people brought in with new thoughts and new ideas. And some of the old guard and gatekeepers didn't want to really let go of some of the gates that needed to be reopened and and put in with newer, younger guards. Same with the same love and the same passion for the HBCUs. But sometimes we got to let our youth and sometimes we got to let new thinkers that you, you sent them to school. They got the education, they got the knowledge, but then you won't let them open the gates and hold the gates. We right. still want to hold that gate. And, I'm, and, and I know that's not with you guys, because I'm looking at, you know, young, progressive, educated change, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you guys able to get through that? Because I know sometimes in the HBCU golf diaspora and the golf space that, you know, golf 
is not a negative, but it doesn't bring in money to schools. So you have to, the schools have to want to have golf programs, not like basketball or football where you can maybe get some money. And I always say the golfers are going to be your best alumni. Those are going to be the people that's bringing the money in later. You put a little money in now with the seeds of golf, the returns are going to be a lifetime, you know? So I understand that, but getting your institutions to understand that, how do you guys go about that? If that's even a problem or not a problem, a change uh, issue. Um, I can speak from my perspective because out of all the HBCUs, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore is the only HBCU that has a professional golf management program. Wow. And we allow our professional golf management students to play on our golf team as well. Um, so we kind of took those steps already with the university and getting them involved in order to even get a PGM program. So they had to be okay with bringing on a golf program and adding that to the school of business. Um, and, and granted, you know, they, they, they bought into what we're trying to do is grow the game of golf, especially on a professional level among our community. Um, one thing that has helped with the programs that we have on our on our campus is the fact that our president is an avid golfer and she supports golf. Um, and the president that we had actually before her was also a golfer as well and is the reasons why we actually have a PGM program. So, you know, it's if you have someone in your ranks that is in your leadership that actually advocates for golf is a little easier to go and go to them, paint that picture and then have them kind of fight and be what I call a sponsor on your behalf uh, to the university. Our chief of staff is also a golfer and, and he's the reason why I'm the coach at the university. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank God for, thank God for him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he wants to see us do well. And, mm. um, you know, and just having that educational component there to your your leadership and being able to also produce, you know, results. So if your team is winning, if, if your students are doing well, it's not just necessarily about winning on the golf course, but also in the classroom and mm -hmm. outside of outside of the university as well. So what is happening with these students once they graduate? And we follow them in our program so we can report that information back with saying golf gave them an education and this is what they're doing now to change lives in the community. And without that golf program or that scholarship that was able to pay for that education, where would this individual be? You know, would they have had those same opportunities? Golf is seen in a light of a game, of a sport. Unlike any other sport, it's not just a sport. It's a way of life for some. It is an avenue that changes lives for many. So, I mean, if we stop looking at it from a golf lens all the time as well. So sometimes you have to be able to communicate to your leadership in the lens of which they see things. So they see things as business. They see things as, as a return on investment. Um, and, you know, and, and where they're going to put their efforts. So if I can also talk to the, to the fact that, okay, let's look at it from not so much of a golf lens, because I know golf. I understand the benefits and importance of golf. Someone that plays golf understands the benefits and importance of golf. But someone who has probably never picked up a golf club, you can't talk to them the same way because they've not lived or experienced the game-changing character and, and things that golf actually promotes and builds and, and allows opportunities in. So um, – it's just being aware of your audience and how you're communicating the story. Thank you. Thank Dope. you for that. Spot on. She's, spot, she's, very, she's spot on. See, that's what young people bring to the table. <laughs> yeah, that's so what that's I'm talking so, about. That's, I mean, if, and I'm keeping it real because there's, uh, there's a transition period, right, from older to younger generation. If you start looking around, around the country, you start to see younger mayors, right? And 
uh, I know, I know too, our mayor here in Birmingham, Alabama, Mayor Randall Wolfen. Uh, we got uh, Mayor Stephen, um, uh, Stephen Group down at um, in Montgomery, Stephen Reed, uh, 40s, I would say, <laughs> late 30s, maybe early 40s. That's changed, right? So I look at it from a perspective as I'm this older gentleman that, you know, I'm an advisor to Tia, right? You know, I'm giving her advice, but she needs to take that advice and inject it and use it in a way that's going to benefit her in this day and age, right? So that's that's kind of how I see myself as an advisor as we continue to get older. You know, she can be able to pick, you know, pick my brain and say, hey, what do you think about this? But then she can take it in this in the day and this day and age and say, okay, well, that's what he that's what he said happened back then in this day. But let me take it and kind of put a twist on it and make it work for me today, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of how I, I see see how we you know affect change and how from in our golfing community. But you talked about um, how do we? Um, Tiana talked about um, getting like her president and is is a golfer, right? My uh, president uh, President Bobby Knight. Is is a forward thinking person, but the, the the person that brought me in, uh, President Dr. George T. French, brought me in to start this program. Who's now at Clark at Clark Atlanta? That's looking to start a program there as well. So mm-hmm. with golf, make you know, make golf your thing. Just we, I mean, we all were just at at the the PGA show, uh, and uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Mike Cooper and and that crew and. Uh, Mr. Baby and all of that, that crew um, from Make Off Your Thing had this White House initiative that took place that's talking about golf, right? For the mm. first time, and, I, and I'm, almost, I'm almost certain this is the first time, for the first time, I think we had over like five presidents from colleges, Dr. Quentin Ross that was from Alabama State. I think we had a couple of ADs from FAMU. Uh, we had UMES. I think your president was there, right, Tiana? My AD was your AD. And for her, yeah, her AD. We had Virginia State president there. So we, I mean, that's how they saw this amazing opportunity for our our, our student, not only our student, our, our golfers, student athlete, but our students at their universities for internship opportunities in an eighty-four billion dollar industry that doesn't look necessary like you and I. Mm. Yeah. For the first time, yeah. I think they see they see golf for those that attended. I think they see golf in a different light, a different perspective that that they can use from a business perspective, like Tiana is saying, use it from a business perspective. And how do you build relationships and then build through those friendships and relationships then inside those country clubs that they visit, they can raise money. For their institutions beautiful beautiful because you know we are the choir right you guys are you live it and breathe it every day you're with your student athletes you're running programs and you're in a coach's uh think tank and we're on the outside of platform advocating yelling it from the yelling it from the from the from the rooftops hey golf is important but you know sometimes we're late as a people, you know, they know it's an $84 billion business. You ain't got to tell other the PWI. They understand it from top to bottom. And they're like, we ain't about to get left out the $84 billion train, right? So for us, we always want to be like, look, even if you're not a golfer or you're president of a university or you're AD, and of course you're concerned about the football and the basketball because that's seat sales and stuff like that, you got to look at what everybody else is looking at too. Mm-hmm. Their eyes have not taken them, they have not taken their eyes, the PWIs, the power fives and stuff off that $84 billion. They just, they just not <laughs> yearly. They're not. And we have to keep our eyes on it too. I'm just glad you guys are able to bring people into the fold. We had um, uh, Charles Penny and his assistant and AD on the show uh, last year. And therefore we're thinking and understanding too. And, you know, and then we had some that didn't, and I'm not going to say the school, they, they, they love the program, but I don't think they get like how important 
the backing is for you guys to make sure some of that 84 needs to come my way in a in a in a in a in an annual sense you know what i mean so i'm just glad you guys are greatly representing and bringing in your presidents and your assistant ad's and your ad's because that's what's gonna uh make change also they gotta they gotta buy into it you could you could you know you you know you guys know what you're doing but if you go into the room and everyone's like i don't get it it's hard to it's hard to wind up them to be like make the necessary what adjustments are the necessary allocations to make your job even that much easier make your reach that much farther so thank you shout out to you guys for actually bringing them into the fold um sif or trish what do you got for me yeah, just to echo, just to echo um, Manny's sentiments. Uh, you guys are very, very fortunate that you have presidents, athletic directors who buy into the program, the game of golf. So now you're not on a uh, a time schedule uh, to win. You know, we know that there is some opposition that you guys face in your respective programs due to finances. Uh, but the thing is, your president, any president of any institution. He's there to fundraise. He's there to raise money. And so it's easier for that president, uh, that dean, uh, to go out and raise those funds uh, for a golf program if he's pro-golf. And we've known (laughs) of certain programs that you have presidents, athletic directors, or what have you, uh, or the people that are at the top, they're not golf first, or I won't even say golf first, but they're not advocates of golf, then now all of a sudden you may have someone who earmarks money to the golf program and next thing you know it's in the matrix in a discretionary fund. <laughs> and then, uh, exactly. And then, How did you know that? How did you know that? Right. I just, I've just heard a lot of war stories and some of the, and Coach Smoot is, you know, someone we have in common that we know, which I won't name, who faces some of those same dilemmas. And so, you know, it's it's unfortunate for those programs uh, to get those, get funding that's earmarked to the golf course. And next thing you know, it's in a discretionary fund and they're eating shrimp as big as your fist in the press <laughs> box. Uh, and I call it image over substance. And so, um, and until we eradicate that mindset, and as Manny stated before, the golfers are the ones who are going to come back. And the golfers are the ones who's going to sit in uh, those Fortune 500 meetings uh, and fellowshipping and uh, with those CEOs. And those are the guys who are going to say, hey, man, I've got a program here that uh, that's doing extremely well. Uh, You need to send some of that finance over this way. Your golfers are going to do that. But when you got money going into the discretionary fund and it's in the matrix. It's tough. Oh, can I chime in on that? Oh, please. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's an educational thing. And I think that is where we need to change the, the education to the community and how that actually operates. So the first thing is, um, and I'm going to help shed some light on that, because I didn't realize this as a student athlete. I saw from an outside looking in perspective and I didn't realize what the challenges were for my coach. I was kind of judgmental um, Mm. on, you know, why don't we have this? Why don't we have that? You know, where's all the money going? And then what that did was, okay, when I do graduate, because I see or I'm led to believe that there's funds as being mishandled, not saying that there is institutions that have not done that, it was the fact of it was that I was believing this. And so going forward, I said, if I donate money, if I know it can't go straight to the program that I'm wanting the money to go to, I wouldn't donate. (laughs) And I think a lot of students and a lot of the community feel that way as well. But here's how you get around that. You have to have a foundation set up for your program. Mm -hmm. And I have one for the men and women at my university. So what you can do is you come and I tell you, hey, you know, if you want to support the program, 
here's how you do so. And that money will go directly into that fund. If you don't have that, or the coach or the program, if it's outside of golf, doesn't have that, and you donate the money to the school, it goes into their overall overall operational budget. Right. And at that point, they allocate it to whoever needs it most or where it needs to go. And nine times out of ten, the athletic department probably will not. They will see some of it, but not a good portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, the operational budget when it comes to the athletics, people think, oh, Division One program, how come you don't have any money? You know, you're under the state. The state gives tons of money to your institution. The government gives tons of money to institutions, but there's stipulations on where that money can be used and where it can go. Right. And the other thing is the state does not fund athletic programs for Division One schools. Mm. So if you thought any money from state was ever going to a Division One program in any sport, it doesn't. So mm. where do they get their money from? They get their money from the student's tuition. Mm. So it doesn't matter if they are a student athlete or not. They have an athletic fee that goes as part of their tuition, and that helps fund the operational budget for the athletic department. So when enrollment is up at an HBCU, they get a little bit more money. When enrollment is down at an HBCU or the economy is impacting um, enrollment the way it has over the last couple of years with COVID and everything, that operational budget is even smaller. Hmm. And so now they have to allocate the little bit of funds that they do get to every equally every athletic program that they support. And when you think about football at some of these institutions, when you think about basketball, baseball, soccer, um, bowling, or just some of these other sports that have a lot more student athletes on their team than golf does or typically holds, we don't get as much. Mm. Because hey, they're going to eat into the operational budget a lot more with the travel of hotels, with feeding, with um, the entry fees. So, I mean, and golf isn't any cheaper. I mean, we're, we're spending with especially with inflation getting hotels for our students getting mm -hmm. shuttles right now shuttle companies went out of business there was a lot that went out of business during the during the COVID epidemic and so now they're wanting to charge anywhere from 4500 up to 7000 mm -hmm. to rent something to be able to hold both your golf teams because we're carrying mm -hmm. luggage we're carrying clubs and so but people don't get to see that part of it. They only see what they see from the outside looking in. And we're the ones looking at the numbers and trying to make it work. And then at some point, the university is like, I don't know if we can continue to support this as much as we would want to. Right. Because mm -hmm. golf doesn't bring in any money like football yeah. or basketball does. But yet we have... I don't even know how many millions of people that play golf, but they don't give to golf programs. Mm -hmm. And and so it's just the educational component. But, of but, it. but I think one thing, and, I'm, and I'll, I'll be quiet after this, that uh, Miss Tiana is dead on, which I've been advocating for years, is create that foundation that you did. And the reason being is, and I'll break it down in terms that where the, the, the people who are watching it can understand. It's almost like sending your kid to school on a, and they get outside scholarships where you tell the people to hold the outside scholarships until financial aid and all that other stuff kicks in, then bring the scholarship. Because what will happen is if you put that scholarship in there first, they going to damn eat that scholarship up. Yeah, they're going to suck it out the portal. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. so the foundation, what she's, what she's speaking of, she's dead on. So now, uh, whatever the money that the university has to give to the program, she going to get that off the gate versus having that scholarship money. And then they say, well, you don't need as much as you did the year before, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I advocate foundations for programs um, so that you can get your money instead of it being out in the matrix. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now, what kind of what and, and I'll ask both of you guys, what kind of pushback do you get for starting a foundation directly for the golf programs within your school? Or is that the suggested model that they want you to do? Well, I guess I can touch a little bit on that because we I know we've had some pushback in the past on foundations at our institution. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but we do have now have a foundation established where those donations directly come to our golf programs and or any other programs that we go out and solicit, um, you know, solicit funds for um, and that those those those. Um, dollars are total earmarked specifically to whatever program they want that to go through. So to Tiana's point that the foundation, establishing that foundation is critical uh, if you want your monies. Now, there's one other thing that I've done with some previous um, past players that played, that's played for me um, out of our institutional side with um, our um, um, cabinet members that uh, over, that's over, over fundraising and scholarships um, and, and have established a golf found a golf scholarship specifically that that person has to sign off on. So for example, I have a parent that get that's given a scholar a scholarship to the golf program every year. And I have a former player that's given a scholarship uh, to the golf team every year. So with that agreement, they have to sign off on that scholarship agreement with the school once they sign up. The same once they sign up, that that money is going specifically to that scholarship, and it's in writing. So you can't take that scholarship and deviate and put it some in some other pot. Mm -hmm. It's got to go there because that's where they've designated. So I've just done that uh, with a former player that. I, uh, Totally appreciate them doing that. Um, so, uh, like you said, Tiana's spot on. Operational budget, spot on. Everything, we're a private institution. Everything's driven by the student. We're not a state school. So we're a private institution. And we, we thrive off of uh, tuition, right? We're tuition, we're tuition driven. So the budgets are not where they need to be. You know, you you know, you know, there's a the possibility, likelihood of your of your your um, budget for that year could be drastically affected. Um, so she's spot on, but you see what I'm saying? Smart people. She knows what she she's done her research. You see how she's done her research. So um, she's spot on. So. Hey, exactly. Now, one quick quick follow up. So say, and I don't know this, but say your school designates six scholarships for the whole team, right? And you have designated two scholarships from families. Now, do they double back and only give you four because they know two is already paid for? Or they let you keep your six plus you got the two from the family? Meaning from a, from a... So say say your athletic director is like, I can give you six scholarships mm -hmm. for the team, right? And you can mm -hmm. divvy up how you want. You can give two people whole scholarships. You can do some half and halves and do right. some academic on one half, golf on the other half. So you can get more bang for your buck from the allocated scholarships, right? Mm -hmm. But you have two parents that's like, I'm going to donate two scholarships directly to students. Now, do the school circle back and take your... Are they keep your six plus you got two more, so now you got eight. Uh, so I was kind of explained from a division one, and then other Tiana's plays from division division one. From a division two for men's programs, we're only allocated three point six scholarships okay. at the division two level. I don't get three point six scholarships, <laughs> right? Uh, so I take the monies that I get, I take and deviate that money and spread load that money out amongst the players, right? So if it's a player that I really want, I might give him a little bit more money. Most freshmen, most freshmen, I don't because I don't know if you're gonna stay, you're gonna be academically sound or whatever. So I kind of break that money as that money, like my seniors matriculate out. I take with that senior, the next player up, that he's gonna get more money, right? So I give them more money. But like the scholarship, outside scholarship. They can't take that money. I can do whatever I choose to do with that money. 
and put it and give it to whomever I choose to give it. It can be to an incoming freshman. It might be to a senior that might need help. I may hold that money because he's got an outstanding balance and take that money. Okay, I'm going to give the scholarship to so-and-so. So when he leaves my house college, he did, he's leaving debt free, right? So that's kind of how I kind of how I operate from a division two from a miles college because my main purpose and main goal is to see the guys that play for me elite try to get out of miles college as close to debt free, but in it or from a reasonable standpoint, being able to manage whatever debt they might carry with them after college, right? So from my that's kind of from a division two perspective. Now, from Division One, Tiana can talk about that better than I. So, in Division One, we get four for men and six for women. If you donated scholarship money and say you want it specifically to go to the women's program, you would put that into my women's fund, and then I would be able to allocate that on top of the the scholarship amounts that I am allotted through the university. I have nowhere near six for my women and I have nowhere near four for my men. And so a lot of times I'm making up on the back end the the money that was donated by our private donors to help these student athletes be able to, to take down some of what they would have to come out of pocket in tuition. Uh, I think I could probably speak for every college coach that if we could fully fund each and every individual that's on our that we bring on to our team uh, that we recruit, we would. But because it's this battle of constantly trying to get more and more funds to be able to support the students that we're recruiting and, and be able to maintain a good golf program, it, it's, it's, a, it's a balance there. Um, and it is very tough. Um, so, I mean, even though those two scholarships was added, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be looked at as a scholarship. It would be looked at as an allotted amount of money and you can add to some of the scholarships that you already have and deviate out that way. Um, a lot of the scholarships are not wholly given out to a student athlete. Um, you wouldn't be able to have a full team if you did that. So you have to break it down and give one individual so much money and, and, and you base that off of GPA, you you base that off of performance. Um, and, and so all those different things come in and come into to the picture as uh, what coach Smoot was saying, you know, freshmen, a lot of times when you're adding someone new to your team, uh, you got to first kind of make sure that they're vibing with the, the culture that you've set for your, your program. And, you know, you can very easily give away some money and then end up could have given that to somebody who really who really needed it um, in a sense that they was willing to work for it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it's so, it's so many different variables, variables there, you right. know, and so it's just that's a coach's coach's call. So you got to be looking at all avenues and seeing things from different lenses um, even international recruitment. Uh, I mean, I have a level of how I recruit. So I, I look in-house first. So I want to look in the state of Maryland because it's a cheaper tuition. It's not going to eat into my budget as much. Hmm. And then I go and look in the United States pretty much, basically all over to see um, who's looking to play for a Division One program. And then the last resort is international. Um, just because that's going to eat into your budget the most. I mean, you, you got to get I-9s, visas. Um, and, and the way our university works is an international student, parents have to show that they actually have the financial means to pay for this student's education well before I even give them any type of money. Uh, so it's really hard for international students to actually get into programs out-of-state students. I mean, that's the $32,000 a year tuition right there. So, I mean, when you're talking a little bit of 10000 or 15000 from, from the golf program, that's not even half to cover what they need. Mm, that 32. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you a couple. I haven't even eaten other, yet. I'll tell you a couple other things real quick, too. I, um, some colleges don't allow you to stack. 
and I, a lot of people don't know what stacking is, but stiff dog talk. I think he alluded <laughs> to that, right? They don't allow you to stack scholarships. So we're talking about a student athlete, right? Right. So, okay, I'm, I got a, you know, I got a 3.5 GPA. I want to give him my athletic scholarship. Then um, he want he he he's eligible. Or she's eligible for academic scholarship. Well, guess what? You might you might give him an athletic scholarship, but then turn around and you can't stack that academics. Now the question I have is we're saying they're students first, right? Right. But they just happen to be athletes, male or female. Right? So why can't they worked hard to earn that academic scholarship, but then they also worked hard enough to get to the next level with the college level? I believe that they should be allowed to to receive both. Absolutely. Um, right? Uh, a student first, athlete second. Mm. You know, and if you want that combination of that student, quality student to come to play for your institution or attend your institution, they should be allowed it because guess what? That football player, that golfer, you know, that 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 student athlete is probably doing way more than the average student on campus mm-hmm. when they're up at 445 in the morning mm-hmm. and they're not, not, not going to bed at at nine, ten o'clock at night because they're looking at film or in the classroom or at study hall. You know, I mean, so I think we do our I think we do our students a disservice um, as as student athletes that you're penalizing them for something that they shouldn't be penalized because they did the work at the high school level, but also did the work on the athletic side to be able to mm. Hey, coach, I had a young lady who made the mistake of saying when I was an undergrad that uh, now I'm, you know, I'm an English major, so I'm in English class. And uh, so we had just played a game in Tennessee and I can't, we came and I, you know, I, I nodded off and I had a young lady in the class that says, I can't believe you're sleeping in this class. I said, well, I do apologize. I said, but I had a long weekend uh, game. She said, well, you got, you athletes, you're just giving scholarships. I said, let me tell you something. I said, excuse my language. I said, ain't nobody gave me shit. I said, I'm at five o'clock um, uh, workouts. Mm-hmm. I said, I got class. I said, then I got lab after class. Then I got to be at practice at four. I got meetings. Then I got uh, dinner. Then I got to go back to film at 10 o'clock. I said, ain't nobody gave me nothing. I earned this. So I get pissed off when people say that athletes are given something. Nah, nah, you do what I do. Oh, we've had them and here at Miles College in the past three, I want to say the last four or five maybe years, four or five years, our valedictorians and salutatorians have been athletes, mm-hmm. both male and female. So um, they're doing the work, right? They're doing all of the work. You're doing twice the work. Right. There you go. <laughs> right. So and I just think I just think the the social media and 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 certain uh, news organizations make it seem that they're getting a free ride, and they don't understand. They're doing twelve hour days every day, not including the work that they even had to do to even be uh, considered for a little bit of scholarship money. You get cut out like, well, man, NIL deals, and they're just doing this and doing that. I'm like, you just look at the glitz. Of a few people that may be able to get an NIL deal on a footballer or whatever. That's just that's you're, we're always looking at the point zero 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 two percent of people to do something, and not looking at the ninety nine percent of people that's actually affected by the day to day stuff. And we, we, at least us in this culture and HB, we got to stop that for sure. We can't change the world, but we can definitely help ourselves by educating. And there's a lot of us that think. Just like that. Oh, they got it good. They're in the best dorms. They're getting this food and blah, blah, blah. They're doing this. They're working. They're working. Nothing's free. They're up early and late and still have to maintain every and still make everybody happy with their obligations. It's work. Yeah. Right? It's work. It's work. Tiana, so, Tiana, I had a real quick question for you because um, I know there's budgets and, and Coach Smoot as well. So there's budgets to recruiting. And so I, I was talking to Darren Harrell with um, playcollege.net. And so, you know, he was telling me that you possibly or very much 
end up with a lady utilizing that service. So my question is, is, you know, utilizing a service like that beneficial with there being budget constraints? And um, how did that come about for that young lady? So, yes, um, as a coach, I mean, we use so many different recruitment avenues um, and a lot of it is free to the coaches. Uh, some of it is free to the student athletes. Uh, some of them, they actually have to pay to have memberships on those websites. Um, you know, I, I made some really good connections um, in Vegas uh, for the coaching summit. And that's how I found that website. Um, and then I started talking to the young lady on there. And, and actually, she just was at our university last week and she committed a couple of days later. So um beautiful 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 you know it, it's it's just the connections fostering relationships um and then maintaining those relationships uh most of the time is is how those things come about and when it comes to a budget wise um i'm constantly in my ad's office and in her face <laughs> and i'm like i'm like ad we got five girls that's the bare minimum. I need some money. <laughs> and so she's like, coach, I hear you. And I know you keep coming with the same message. I haven't forgot about you. And I'm like, so, you know, it, it's, I'm constantly all over campus all the time, making relationships, talking to people, trying to figure out who they know that I might need to know. So, I can start fostering those relationships. Um, I mean, not every not every school gets a Steph Curry. You know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. wish we had one. <laughs> <laughs> we um, all do. Right. Please, if you're out there, support our HBCUs. Right. Need more of that support. Exactly. And you know, I, I did hear something the other day. I, I think I heard it from y'all podcast. As you know. Uh, people aren't going up to some of these people and asking for Come on. the opportunity uh, to have that sponsorship, you know, and I think it's really about having that introduction and being in the room mm -hmm. and, and who you know and how you can get access to some of those people. Um, I mean, I can't really write a letter to Tiger Woods right now. And be like, <laughs> Tiger, you know, Howard got stuff. We need you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, you no. know, and 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 it, it may fall on deaf ears, you know, because at the end of the day, he doesn't know me. He doesn't have any type yeah. of awesome relationship with me, even though I've been following, you know, him forever. So, um, you know, it's just how does how does that happen? I think that's the gap that needs to be bridged there as well. And most that's of smart. The, you know, it's our own community. A lot of times, you know, we're, we're looking in on the situation and it's easy to complain about what someone is doing and not doing or capable of doing, but no one's willing to actually start and say, here's my money. Where do I need to put this so we can get this process started? They're always saying, you know, well, what do we need to do to make this change? But the difference between our counterparts is when they need to make something happen, they send out a message to the people they know who got it and say, I need $50 million. You give me a million, you give me a million, you give me a million, and now I got it. And they're not talking about in these rooms and brainstorming on, well, who do you need to go after to go get it? Right. So at, that, all. <laughs> at all. At all. At all. At, at all. At all. Like, <laughs> look, look, Tom, you asked for a million, here's a million. If I hear something later, I'm just going to go back to Tom. But they never question because of the relationship. If Tom asks, Tom get. Tom is, and they, I'm going to tell you what I've been told. Just sitting, I've heard this over and over. Close mouths don't get fed. I keep hearing that over and over and over. Close mouths don't get fed. Right? It's always, yeah. it's always a no if you don't ask. It's right. And the thing is, in, in our, commu our community, we we can be self-sustainable. Oh, no our community can no be self-sustainable. We can be self-sustainable by our own community. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you know, if our community pulls together and we join hand by hand, hip by hip, and help continue 
to support these programs and fully fund them, alumni, get involved, right? You know, boosters, get involved and support these programs, not just the traditional programs, support the programs like golf, right? The ones, the kids, they're going to give back. Support, you know, support our, our non-revenue-driven sports. Because there's some talent that's going to come out of there. There's going to be some CEOs that's going to come out of there. There's going to be some sure. CFOs that's going to come. You, you know, you're going to have um, some presidents that's going to come out of, out of your non-revenue-driven sports. Yeah. But then when they get looked over, guess what happens? They gonna look over the institution yeah. every time. Every time every they gonna ask, time. "Why should I support?" And Tiana touched on that. She touched on it. You know, she had this as a student athlete. She had this idea in her head that the coach probably wasn't taking care of her, right? Mm. But that wasn't the coach's fault, right? And boom, you get these high executives. That's what slipped off. He said that there, you can sense, still sense what he's feeling from back in the day in college because just because you graduate from college and I didn't go, that was my first step. I was a Marine for 24 years of my life and then mm -hmm. I transitioned and went back nice, to college. Nice. Um, but I watched these students on campus. I watch how they interact. Mm -hmm. I've sat in, I just sat in on SGA, junior um, not uh, president, uh, vice president roles. I'm listening to what these students are saying about respect. I'm listening. So guess what? I'm saying students ain't giving back to you. No. Right? No. You got to hear that voice. That community is the one paying your bills. That community is the one that's going to give back to the institution mm -hmm. at some point in when they become professional uh, vice president. I got a kid now that was they. Um, I uh, created a job for him in a bank. Now he's on the fast track. Just left the college last year. He's on the fast track to becoming a vice president. That kid's wow. getting back. Guess what? If I pick up the phone somewhere down the road and say, hey, we need help. He loves the school. So guess what? Because I took care of him, I can pick up the phone and say, hey, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. So that's, those things are, are, are so things are cr critical, and I don't know if everybody pays attention to the fact that the young people that we that we're dealing with today are so different than I growing up. You know, do as I say, not as I do. That is not this generation. Not at no, all. No, they're very transactional. Right. They're very transactional. <laughs> very I transactional. Think, I think the major thing is. A lot of times when people make an ask, they're like, well, I don't have it. But I, I implore my alum that have graduated that are still in their upcoming and, and trying to make make themselves a successful career. I said, you know what? You're working at these country clubs. I said, I'm not asking for you to dig in your pocket. But I know that you fostered some relationships with some pockets that you know that you can go dig into to help your cause and help your program that you came from. And so it's just stepping up and being able to not be afraid to ask for those things. And, you know, and it's holding somebody accountable. Hmm. Uh, I, I think that's the major important thing. And, and granted, it doesn't come overnight, but I think if we kill some of the views that we have, that has been around and the stereotypes that have been around mm. that's associated mm. with HBCUs for years and look at all the, the good work that is being done, but how accelerating that could be if people could actually do one thing and that is trust, you know, the university or the, the program that we came from at least and be able to give back to it. And when you see those people in the roles and the new people that you have in those roles, being able to trust those individuals enough to know that you can support something and it's not going to to be like how it was years ago. Yeah. I get it. I definitely, definitely get it. Yeah. Um and 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 it's and and a lot of and 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 it's on us too, folks. It's us too that have to come together and not want to be popular to be 
take all the credit that, oh, I did this, I did this to give. How about many becomes one? Like our Facebook group, some of the Facebook groups got 10, 20, 30,000 people. That's self-funding several organizations monthly, but everybody wants to be the man or the woman. Oh, no. If I give this $10, I need to, I need to be on the board. The $10 puts me on the board. So we don't do enough of unity giving because people want to be popular. People want all the credit. Uh, me, Trish, and Sif was talking earlier about uh, uh, a thing we're trying to come together and 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 do where it's got we want to do a unity tournament for the golf coaches association you know what i mean we want to put together something really nice because see we want to eliminate talk right so who knows better where the money's going if it's going to you guys you guys know where to put it and where to go you know so that's off the table second we have everyone on our platform all the clothing companies and the charities and the people doing this. We have not denied anyone to come on this platform, starting from the HBCUs all the way down to the shirt maker. If they have something going on charity wise. So we don't have a stake or favoritism on our platform. So if we ask, we're going to do this for this and we need everyone to come in and just play their role because the greater good is this. Well, where the money? Who going to have? Well, the money's going to the coaches association. They know where to go. If you if they if they don't know where the money's going, then you know, it ain't no need to give. They're the professionals. They're the expertise. So we we got something in the plans and we're going to talk to coach Smoot, talk to you guys and see what we can do to do a unity tournament. Mm-hmm. And we're and and we're trying to really plan this out for like 2025. Not nothing quick because we want it right. We want it to be annual. We want it to be uh, self self serving to you guys without mm-hmm. any questions. And we we want to present it to where you talk about you want to help. HBCUs. You talk about you love the game. You talk about golf. Well, this is an opportunity to where we form something that not just one person's going to get the credit, everyone's going to get the credit who participates, but the money is going directly to the Black Golf Coaches Association for the HBCUs. And we don't have to worry about where it's going. They have their own board. They have their own decision making. And trust me, they know best where that money needs to go. All we have to do is work and get volunteers and get donations and get title sponsors and get this money to you guys and that's the easy part for us really when you don't have to worry about the good of the cause you know what i mean so we're planning something where we got something in our minds we're going to talk to you guys a little bit more because i just truly believe and i've seen this in entertainment i've seen this and even golf when people have forged relationships like you say to PWI, when they be like, Tom, I need that five million to go tell your friends, they never be like, Well, what's it doing? But they be like, Tom asked for it. Boom. Yeah. 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 If, anything, if anything happens, we going up, we going upside Tom's head, but we're not gonna question. <laughs> We're not gonna question Tom because he has a relationship right. with us and he needs this bread. Right. Like, 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 like Coach Prime said, the boosters, they coming. I talked to them. We done had 10 losing seasons. They got that money. I said, we need that money. They was like, okay. Nothing else said. Okay. Here's some money. It's yours. One more round. Yeah, it's yours. One more round. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just, and I don't know if all HBCUs are people in general. Fostering relationships, just like Tiana said, and just like Coach was said, there, it's the key. It's it, it's not pulling teeth if you have a relationship, and you and, and it's just about sometimes getting you guys in the rooms mm-hmm. with the people that can help. You know, everyone can't help. Everyone doesn't have the financial ability to help. But getting you guys in the rooms, ain't no need for me to be in the room if I'm not a HBCU coach. Right. I need to put you guys in the room if I say right. I want to help. You know what I'm saying? If I really want to help, so. I just think that you guys provided a great service and we all learned something just tonight about funding, about scholarships, about how money is allocated, about how you can direct money to your program. It's that's invaluable. 
and that builds trust and that builds information where we're just not looking out and being like, well, they just paying with the money. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you guys, are, well, they just, you know, people is doing this. It's a labyrinth of, of wrong turns you can make. That's not even no one's fault when you give money. It's, it's just, it's just the nature of the political business and the different layers in a institution itself, whether it's PWI or HBCUs, it's, it's a labyrinth of stuff and policies and laws that you have to do that people don't understand. At least we don't understand it because we're not there. You guys understand it. And like Maurice Jackson said, great insight because even he his you know, his daughter's at Howard and he gets information, but we don't know the ins and outs like you guys. And thank you guys for giving us that information. We're gonna wrap soon. Um, Trish and Snit, uh, 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 Chris, last words. Uh, Any one of you guys. Real quick, Tiana and Smoot. Um, Coach Smooth, my bad. That's all right. <laughs> you may have to call me, so I'm used to that. <laughs> listen, yeah. So listen, tell us real quick how we can help your school. How can we help your school? Um, is there a website? Is you know, just let us know because we put that in our notes, and um, we just want to know how can we help. So definitely, you can go to uh, umes.edu. We do have a website on there for the PGM program. And then I also am the contact for the donations for our men and women's golf program. So I can put you in touch with the lady that's over those funds as well. Uh, so that way, when you make your donations, you can hold both of us accountable. And I also follow up with feedback to let you know how and where your money went. So you'll be able to see the product because those students are going to be very thankful for being able to have that education paid for uh, with those scholarships. So the University of Maryland is for sure is my school and you can donate to our, to our golf program. Uh, you can email me at lsmoot at miles.edu and then I can assist and kind of, kind of point you in the right direction. Um, I'm also put on my, um, President at BCGCA, you can go to hbcugolf.org and hit and donate on that donate donate button button and just know that um, through our organization, um, we're here to continue to support our students, support every student uh, that plays golf at our HBCUs, and that we that your donations will definitely go back into making sure that we elevate our. Um, programs within the HBC community. Uh, and I heard, I saw a little line text line down there. Someone was asking, does Bethune or Miles need players? We all always need play, always need players. Said Maryland or my yeah, Maryland or Miles need any. We all always need players, but I and I'm gonna tell you the thing that if, even if I have a player that I that I can't use, I'm always out supporting other HBC coaches, I'm going to send them to an HBCU golf or golf coach so that they can, whether it's Niles College, I want you, I want their student or their child to be able to pick the best choice for them because this is their first business decision. So, you know, I want them to have all that opportunity to be, to evaluate, you know, whatever college they choose, or they choose. Beautiful, beautiful. And I know are dedicated to you guys i know that little ticker where it says you can hear us on iheart spotify amazon well we're going to add your link to the golfers association so every show we do that link will be at the bottom of any show we do and our and that link will be in our liner notes in perpetuity always there we have we do have the mac champ link in our liner notes because we just have a special relationship with jeff and his organization and guess who's next you guys will always be in our liner notes we appreciate just that. because we believe in your we believe in you guys you guys have proven this time and time again that you're doing the work you got young you got knowledgeable you got forward thinkers and that's what it's going to take you know when we're long gone the tiana's of the world <laughs> will be and the julia cifras of the world will be carrying this torch on so 
you know, um, that's a promise from us. That would be at the bottom of the ticker for you guys as coaches association. We've had you guys on before through different presidents, and we're just going to support a thousand percent, no matter who's there. Because we know you guys are doing the work. We was blessed enough to have Howard's coach on first and have uh, Coach Perry on. And, you know, he's a strong guy and he had a vision and people was questioning him. And guess what? He was right, y'all. You know, stop it. He had a vision and he was right, y'all. I had, we had to do a follow-up and because people was like, well, how come he did this decision? I was like, he has vision. He's my and guy. He out. He's my he guy. Yeah. And we, we, we've had a lot of HBCU guys on, and we've had a lot of coaches. And first of all, Tiana, we just love that you out there putting in that work, not as a female, but just as a young, young African-American leader, thought leader and uh, work leader. And this just the future is just bright. And we're just happy to know you. And we we're just happy to have you on this show because you shed light. And that's what it is. You shed light. Um you guys' final words, and then we're out of here. We always give you guys the last words. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, shots out, and then we out. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give up my, my contact information, so I will put my email out there. It's tjjones at umes.edu. Um, and I don't mind giving my phone number as well. So 216 903 That is my business line. You can text or call me at any time. Um, and, you know, I, I look forward to, to our season. I look forward to watching y'all podcast more. So thank y'all for having me on. And um, most importantly, you know, if you didn't take anything out of this, supporting HBCUs, in the, in the program is super important because it's invaluable to the student and, and the experience that they receive, just being able to pay for their education and leave that free. Uh, it's nothing better for especially us as, as a demographic to be able to come out of, out of college after four years and be debt free in a world that's already against us. So if you can help us, help the new generation it, they'll definitely start reaching back and start helping, helping some more people. So, um, you know, I'm gonna always advocate for my program first. That's right. You know, yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, uh, from from two perspectives as a head golf coach here at Miles College, um, I just didn't want to say continue to. You know, you can reach out to me again. My phone number is two zero five five three two. 0927. You can reach out to me too. I got young girl. She, she, she got that. She set the, she set the tone. So um, uh, I just want to say, you know, you know, we as a community, uh, we need to continue to support each other. We need to continue to support our HBCUs. Um, the HBCU is a, is a hot commodity right now, and we can't let that flame that let that flame die. We have to keep keep support. Keep thriving to be, you know, to keep the HBCU out, out there in, in the forefront of people, whether, whether you, you're black, white, or, or other, but we we know just how powerful the HBCU community is. Uh, continue to support golf, continue to, to help us elevate our, our, our student athlete that's striving to be, whether it's LPGA or whether it's PGA or APGA, um, thriving to get to that next level, whether it's playing professionally on the golf course or becoming a professional within the, uh, within the, the uh, golf industry, that we keep supporting that. And that's what the BCGCA is all about. We're about elevating our student athletes. It's not about uh, none of us as coaches. It's about us making sure that the next generation of student athletes in the golf space and also at our institutions that we continue to push through and push them through to be the best professional athlete, best professional in in society so that they can carry us to the next to the next level. Right. Love Yo. it. Y'all done heard it tonight from the experts. Y'all done heard it from the people who's doing it. You done got a lesson on 
many, many things. And like we say, there's good news. There's never bad news. Just change news. And on that note, we're going to keep pushing forward. They know they family. They know they coming back anytime they want or just we need to give a shout out or give whatever information that's going on in their diaspora. They got it. Our platform is their platform because these are the people who's doing the work. Hopefully we can provide a platform. Hopefully we uh, bring in people so it makes their job just a little bit easier. They can't go out always and make a big platform so people can hear them. We go out to try to make a platform, not because you want to hear us, because we bring on experts and we bring on the people in the grind and in the pits doing the work. And that's what we do. And that's what we consistently have done since we started and give you the real hear it from them don't hear it from us and we're just grateful you guys listen we're grateful for the expertise and the insight from our our be- uh, beautiful panelists um i could keep talking but these people want to get the hell off of here and so do i so on that note guess what next week we'll have another one next week we'll have more guests next week we'll keep talking and on that guess thank, what? You. Thank, thank you thank you thank you thank, thank you so much you. Thank Keep you. doing Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Yes. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Thank you.